Daddy. Hello, Mother. Uh, Mom, you're live on YouTube. Oh, no, man. No, you're talking nonsense. We just want to ask you, yeah. how many earthworms do you encounter in your garden? Good God, how can you ask me that? I've never even ever seen an earthworm. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, okay, Mom. Um, thank you for that. Is that all you phoned me about? For now, yes. We're doing this YouTube thing here yeah, for earthworms. Oh, well, alright, I'm sorry to be so unhelpful, but anyway, that is the story. Okay. Alright. Okay. Say, th say goodbye to your listeners and I'll call you later. Okay. Bye. Bye. When I arrived on the farm, one of the first things I thought to try and do was to set up a grey water system. All I've used is a number of black pipes that redirect my shower water and washing machine water into an area of my garden. It enters in through a tire that catches all the lint and things. It then drains through a pipe into a trench that's been backfilled with biochar and is protected by a number of tires that are filled with uh, fresh horse manure. What I've found in the system is that I have an incredible abundance of earthworms that are, in, that are living within the areas that are constantly wet. I didn't make any attempt at inoculating worms into this area. They have either been around and bloomed or they arrived by themselves. I think the latter is more likely. What do you feed your earthworms? We keep a staging bucket in the kitchen where we put all our food scraps. I like the idea of a staging bucket because it allows the things to go a little bit rotten before you take them to the worms. Worms aren't targeting the food itself but rather the microbes living upon the surface. They eat bits and pieces of rotting food to get the microbes living from the surfaces into their guts. The only things we don't put into the worm farm are meat, dairy, citrus and onions. It doesn't take long for the worms to turn whatever you've put into the barrel into this dark, rich, coffee kind of ground. All kinds of other things end up living in there too, but they never really bother me much. So how sustainable is it to have a blossoming earthworm population? The best way to answer this question is to actually go and look for them. I have a small site where I've been experimenting with cover. I've managed to convert a weed dominated annual area into more of a perennial mix of plants. In doing so I've created permanent ground cover. I'm really happy with the way this experiment has turned out. Being able to go out and find a worm in the soil, it's a sign of getting something right. It's an indicator. It shows you that your soil food web is establishing. Maintain that soil food web, look after your soil structure, and keep all the little guys that keep you productive happy. What's up YouTube? To those of you who came back and subscribed last week, thanks very much. This is the video I put out there, you can go and have a look. And all you newcomers who are looking to subscribe, please click on my button over here. I'll always try and keep these things short, fresh and real.